Welcome back. We're going to continue computing free cash flows. And this time we're going to take a look at the other starting points. So we mentioned we can use net income as a starting point. We can use EBITDA or we can use our net operating profit after tax. So uh, the one thing that you want to pay attention is that EBITDA and NOPAD are non-GAAP items. So you may not have that available if you are using a publicly audited financial statements. The formula is relatively straightforward. Um, this is um, free cash flow to the firm. So we need to add back all the financing expenses. So to the firm means that is to all stakeholders, including um, debt holders, lease holders, and preferred stock holders and common stock holders. So we'll start with net income. We add back all non-cash expense. So very similar to here. Um, we will not include depreciation and amortization under EBITDA because EBITDA is before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Right? Um, and then um, in EBITDA, we have to subtract tax but for net income, we don't have to subtract tax because net income is already after tax. So um, in all cases, we'll include changes in working capital cash flows. Um, and no PAP, again, we will not subtract tax because it's already after tax. And once we get, uh, you should, in theory, you should be able to get the same answer regardless of your starting point. Um, the big, the most important decision uh, or factors decide, uh, affecting your decision is whether or not the information is available. To get the final free cash flow for all stakeholders, we subtract from cash flow from operations the net capital expenditure. So once again, the investment that we need to make in the company in order for, for the firm to grow. Next, we're going to take a look at how do we compute free cash flows to common equity holders using these alternate starting points. Uh, it's very similar, similar uh, with, of course, the exception that uh, interest expense will have to be excluded. So we will not add back interest expense to net income. Uh, if we are doing EBITDA, which is before interest and taxes, we do have to subtract interest expense. and once again, we're going to um, subtract uh, after tax um, in the case of no pad. So this will be after tax interest expense because this is already um, an after tax amount and we will not be subtracting tax again. In EBITDA, we can subtract just the interest amount, uh, but we also have to subtract taxes. So the important thing to keep in mind is do not double count or double subtract something. So that's the uh, that's how we can get to free cash flow from operations for equity holders. From that, we have to subtract net capital expenditure, and then we also have to subtract financing activity. So this next two step uh, is the same as what we've done uh, in the uh, using the statement of cash flow as a starting point. Um, the only difference is how do we get to free cash flow from operations at different starting points. Now, in addition to computing the free cash flow, there are other potential adjustments if you are working in a special situation. Uh, the special situations include privately held company, especially family business. Uh, family business oftentimes has very unique arrangements um, to, that make sense to the owners uh, for tax purposes um, uh, and sometimes for uh, family reasons. Um, we want to pay attention to any transactions that are unlikely going to continue uh, under new management after an acquisition or a merger. Uh, here's some example. Um, the owner may draw below market salaries and take capital distributions. Um, obviously, that's for tax purposes. Um, and if you acquire that firm, you have higher uh, management from the labor market. You have to pay the market 
rate so you need to adjust for that um, other things that may happen is um, the owner may decide to provide um, health and pension benefits for uh, for their family members uh, even though those employees are hourly or even seasonal uh, and would not qualify for such benefits um, in the in the regular labor market but because they are family members uh, they uh, they would be provided so watch out for those unique arrangements N next to illustrate this we're going to use an example um, so please pause the video we and go ahead and download the uh, the excel template for standing desk Inc. Uh, we're going to do two things. We will compute the free cash flows for the firm, meaning for all the stakeholders, uh, and also free cash flow for common equity shareholders. And we're going to use a different starting point. Hello, this is the um, template for Standing Desk Inc. Uh, I just want to point out a couple of things um, that you uh, that is unique about this company. This is a brand new company that was started three years ago, and during the first year of full operation, uh, they end up losing money, which is not unusual for a startup. And because they lost money, they don't have to pay any tax. Uh, by the next year, they were generating income, but they have tax loss carry forward, so they still once again don't have any income tax. Uh, they started paying tax um, in year three when they uh, when they have used up all their tax loss carry forward. And the template include the income statement, um, statement of retained earnings, balance sheet, as well as statement of cash flow. So we could have used cash flow from operating activities as our starting point, but the goal of this exercise is to illustrate how we can use EBITDA, uh, earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization as a starting point. Um, this is still a privately held company, so it does provide a lot more detail in this income statement than uh, is required by Gap. In this template, I have filled out the labels for you because um, it this um, these items are unique for each firm. So uh, you do need to, uh, as I said, valuation is much more of an art than a science. So in this company, we have EBITDA. So let's start with that. Let's pick up earnings before interest and tax and depreciation amortization. And then we need to compute cash flow from changes in networking capital. So we have an increase in current asset is an outflow. So we'll make that um, a negative. Um, but that is um, in current asset except cash. So let's add up all the current assets. So it's important to pay attention to the number of parentheses. So let me add up all the current assets. So so that's the current asset this year. Um, so I did not include cash minus the current asset last year. So that's the increase. And I'm putting all of that inside parentheses because I need to change the sign. Because if it's positive, if it's an increase, it is a cash outflow. Apparently, I have one extra bracket. You don't need that one. <laughs> okay, and then we do the same thing for current liability. Um, it only has one item for current liability, so we don't need to do the summation. So in here, an increase is a info. So we just take current liability this year minus last year. So if it's an increase, it will be an info. If it's a decrease, it will be an outflow. And then we have to subtract cash tax, uh, but it's net of tax savings on interest expense. So what is tax savings on interest expense? Basically, what we are saying is that since we paid thirteen thousand dollars in interest and we paid thirty percent in in tax, so we can save we by deducting interest uh, interest expense, we save thirty percent on. $13,000. So to create this formula, we'll start with a negative sign because we are subtracting and we're subtracting tax. 
So that's our tax. Uh, minus interest expense, $13,000 times the tax rate for that year. So however much tax we pay, we'll save 30% um, of that. And then we have um, cash for liquidity. We've done this before, so this is not this is the same. This is not any different. It's the opposite sign of our change in cash. An increase is an outflow, so an increase. So we need to put a negative sign in front of change in cash. And then the sum of this give us the free cash flow from operations for the firm, for all the stakeholders. As for investing activity, that is the change in net capital expenditure. So we, uh, again, an increase in capital is going to be an outflow. So we put a negative sign in there. So it will be fixed assets. We'll use gross, the gross amount, so before depreciation. So the, uh, we did increase our asset, um, so we'll have an expenditure of $250,000. And then the free cash flow to the firm is the sum of free cash flow from operation and take out any investing activity. And once we've done that, we can copy it to the next two years. So let's take a quick look at what does this mean. If you take a look at um, the statement of uh, retained earnings, stockholders took no distribution in year zero, one, and, and uh, minus one and minus two. Uh, bondholders get $13,000 in interest. So that is the $13,000 in the last two years. In this year's, in addition to the $13,000, we actually gain a tax benefit because the $13,000 is tax deductible. So the tax benefit comes from the government and it belongs to the firm. Next, we're going to take a look at computing free cash flow for common equity holders, also starting with EBITDA. So the first step is the same as what we have done. So we start with EBITDA, $345,000. And then we also have cash flow from changes in networking capital. Um, notice that this is the same as before, so we don't have to redo the calculation. Uh, we know that's that's what we have done. So always um, save your time when you can. And then we need to subtract net interest expense. So, so minus, subtract means minus, interest expense is $13,000. And we also have to subtract taxes. And then the last part is, um, increase and decrease in cash required for liquidity. Once again, it's the same as what we've done before. So I can just pick up what we have already done. So avoid unnecessary work. And free cash flow from operations for common equity is the sum of this. And then net capital expenditure, remember that's the same too, that didn't change. And then free cash flow to common equity holders is the sum of these two. Now we have, I have the label put down as financing activity. Um, I look up in here, our long-term debt did not change and our paying capital did not change. So there's no changes in any financing activity. So we just can um, ignore that for this time. Now let's copy this over. And notice that free cash flow for common equity holders is zero. And that actually matches what we have seen before with the statement of retained earnings. There was no distribution uh, to common stockholders. Um, so the benefit uh, of the, ta of the um, tax subsidy to the interest expense um, enable us to increase our um, cash holdings. 
we'll end this video here. In the next video, we're going to look at how do we value these companies using the free cash flows. See you soon.